So today we're going to go over installing Shrine 3.0 and then connecting up to a Shrine hub. So on the left is a uh, is an instance on of you of uh, CentOS, and on the right we have the install guide for Shrine 3.0. So we're going to go through all the various chapters, the 14 chapters, and then we're going to connect it up to our hub, and then we're going to run some queries. So I'll go into the introduction. Okay, it basically just talks about the shrine. Uh, so we're going to look at some of the requirements. Okay, so we have an CentOS, we have a Chrome browser, we have the four cores, we have eight gigs of RAM, 100 gigs of hard drive space, and then we have the open JDK, okay? I love the Tomcat. So we're gonna install, let's look at the install and configure uh, Java. So this will show you how to install it um, using an AWS instance. And so let's begin by adding the user a shrine. Okay, and then we've added the user. Uh, we already have Java JDK installed, so I'm going to skip over the JDK installation. Um, so now we're going to install the Apache Tomcat. And as you can see, it has various different commands. And so one thing you notice is going to opt shrine Tomcat. And hyphen P says create all these if they don't exist. The op does exist, as we can take a look. And we see that we have an opt. There's a wild apply for the ITB2 instance, but there is no shrine in Tomcat. If we were to say just run this command like this, make let's just run this one. I'm going to copy this and run. And as we see, we get a permission denied. So in order to actually run a lot of these commands, it's recommended that we just run this as root. So if we sudo su. And so then, if we were to say, run that same command, it created it fine. So if we take a look, opt shrine tomcat, and it's there. So we can actually just, now that we're a root, we can just copy and run these. And as you know, some of these change groups and change owners, you would have to actually be root in order to actually run those. So let's continue and just, Okay, and so um, you notice it says it had this uh, com setting correct permissions uh, because I, I copied that. That's actually not a real command. Uh, but, but it did everything that we wanted it to do. It created the Tomcat instance. Okay, so now setting up the shrine service. So then this will set, uh, this will stop and start shrine as we need to. So what we're going to do is just vi etsy rc.d and nit.d and we're going to call it shrine and then we're just going to basically as it was posted right here etsy and nit.d that shrine and we're just going to select all of this copy this and paste it into our VI instance. Escape out of this and save this. Um, so let's set up the Shrine environment. Okay. And so in the uh, Op Shrine Tomcat setting VN, we want to set this option. So we're going to copy this and we're going to go into that file and edit it. So opt, op Shrine. Tomcat bin, and we currently do not have a set env.sh, but we can just create one, set env.sh, and we're going to add the parameters from here. And if you notice, the user time zone is set for American New York. Uh, if you're in a different time zone, then set it to whichever time zone is appropriate for you. So let's save that and also let's uh, change the permission so that it can be executed. And as we can see, we now have a set env sh. Okay, so we've completed chapter five. 
ran into this fairly quickly. So now let's look at installing the uh, database. So here we're going to just run this command to ins uh, install the MySQL database. Uh, the MariaDB is just a derivative of the MySQL database. And as you can see, it's completed. And so now we can start the service. And we've started it. And also, if we want to enable this to be started at runtime or when the machine gets rebooted, we can set that. And as you can see, it created the symbolic links for that. And then after that, they recommend that we make some modifications to the uh, number of uh, connections. So we'll take a look at that file. It's the Etsy My CNF. So VI Etsy My CNF. And it does have a MySQL D save. So all we have to do is just add this line of max con uh, connections. That's it. Max connections of 2049. So we'll increase the number of connections to 2049. And so now we actually have to then create this shrine database and uh, add the users. So now let's connect up to the MySQL instance. And as we see, we're connected. And so now we're just going to create the users. Um, this one, I'm, for the demo purposes, uses the d demo user identified by is like is the password to be used. So we're creating a shrine user that will be set with a password of demo user. And we're going to grant all user uh, all privileges to this database for this user. Okay. As we can see, that's it. And then slash Q will quit out of this. Okay, so now that we've set up or configured the database, so um, Let's go to uh, 6.1. And so now we need to set up the database. So we're going to do uh, the wget and then the unzip. And so I did a CD to go back into my uh, home directory. And so I executed those two commands, unzipped it. And so, so now we're going to log into the database, and this is MySQL, the user shrine with the demo user password. And at this point, we're going to create four different databases that are required for shrine. We're going to create those four uh, databases, and it's been completed. And then we're actually going to now create all the instances. So what we can do is we can quit quit out of this, uh, and then if we run each command, so this is actually a, a command running from the command prompt, and we're saying load it, load uh, log into the Shrine user into this new da database, and then load in the DDT or the SQL statements, create statements, and any other inserts for that database, and that got completed. So we're going to do each one. For these, I just like to do them each one at a time, just to make sure that they complete properly. And, and if there's any issues, I know which database had those issues. And if there is any issues, you can either drop the database, recreate it, and then look at what happened. Um, and so this was for MySQL database, or the MariaDB. Uh, there's also ones on how to do it for SQL Server and Oracle. Uh, okay, so now we completed section 6.1. And so now we need to configure the database connections. So Tomcat, as we know, uses the context.xml to create the databases. So if we go to the opt shrine Tomcat comp folder, we will notice that there is a contacts.xml. So let's vi that. And as we see, it's uh, right here. It has a contacts with some information in it. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to uh, 
delete everything from here and just use the one from drawing. So deleted everything. Um, and so we are going to just highlight everything from here and copy it and insert it into the database. And so what this is saying is using the MySQL database, this is connecting up to uh, the, uh, the local machine on port 3306. This is the database to use Shrine query history. This is the Shrine and the password gem we're using. And it has the same for the different databases, the problem DB, this is the Shrine DB. This is the adapter audit one, adapter audit, okay. The QEP audit and the Stuart DB. Okay, so we can save that. Okay, and so as likewise, there's some Oracle and SQL Server ones. Um, and then in 6.3, so 6.3 is special. This is if you were setting up a hub, then you would run th this command to create, uh, to add the required hub. So next we're gonna actually install the Shrine software. So first it wants us to go into the web apps folder. And if we go there, we will notice that there was some stuff in there and they're recommending that we just remove everything. So it's all gone. And so next it wants us to get this file. Okay. And we're going to save it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so as you can see, we now have a Shrine API war file. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at, some, now that we've installed the software, we're going to take a look at the Shrine configuration files. And so in here, we have our Shrine comp file, if it's a non-hub node downstream, okay. Um, and this is kind of a sample of the shrine.hub, okay? So let's do this. Let's copy this uh, shrine setup into that. So this was part of that initial zip file that we had down downloaded at shrine.zip. And so that's why I had to go back into the, my home directory because that's where I uh, had it. So I'm gonna copy that into the shrine.com. And so then if we go into the op shrine tomcat lib and take a look at the shrine, okay? And this is what it looks like. It's very similar to here, okay? So then that's, so now we need to set up the shrine user and other. And so this will actually create the users on the ITB2 instance um, due to the fact that we've already created one and this is gonna be our third node using the Cynthia data, this has already been completed. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to open up another instance of one that I've currently on uh, node two, and so that we can see side by side the differences. Okay, so this is our other instance. Uh, so I'm going to go into the opt, and as you can see, we, are, we have a shrine instance in here. And so if we go into the Tomcat, folder and then we take a look at the uh the lib okay if we go and try to go into the lib it says permission denied so i'm gonna sudo su and so now we'll go into the lib and we have a shrine.com so let's take a look at this shrine.com and basically compare it to our previous one and so what this is saying is the shrine hub so i'm going to edit this because these two nodes should be fairly uh, similar. So it's going to be pointed to just a shrine hub, not the fileaway.com. Whatever, wherever the location of your hub is, ours is called shrine, dot, shrine hyphen hub. Okay. And so then within here, this will be the node. And so in this case, this will be shrine node three. Insert shrine node three, okay? And then the domain is, go, uh, is gonna be ITV2 demo. Let's 
going to be I2V2 demo, I2V2 demo. Okay. And so then this will be the node key. Shrine node three. Okay. And so then the rest of this should be basically already set, except for some other things. Um, the hive credentials, uh, the password is not change it, it's actually demo user. Okay, and so then we're gonna take a look at the rest of this configuration. And so this is the same, the adapter mapping file, the key store, the one thing is this is set for node one, and it's actually one creating a third node, so we're gonna replace that with three. And so then the rest of this I leave as is. So that is the shrine.com uh, setup. And so that's that's what basically this talked about. Um, so the next thing is setting up the ACT ontology. Loading this up uh, into ITB2, which we've already complete uh, which we've already completed. And so now we're gonna set up the adapter mapping file. And this is saying where we can get it from. So as we see, we have our adapter mapping with the COVID uh, data set in it. So if we unzip this, and we have our adapter mapping COVID all. So what we need to do is we need to copy this into our adapter mapping file that we that we have in the lib folder or copy this into the folder. So we're going to copy the adapter mapping CSV to opt shrine tomcat lib and it's the adapter mapping CSV. Okay, and that's it. So, and then so that's it for chapter 10. So now we have integrating with the ITB2, which we've already kind of went into a second ago earlier. We now going to generate a new key store. So in order to do that, we need to make sure we're in the op shrine folder. And so this is the command to create it. And we're going to make some, some changes. So the store.password needs to be the same password that's in the shrine.com. In our case, it's called change it. Okay. Okay. And the other thing that we need is we need the node name. And so in this case, it's shrine node three. And the same for the alias, it's shrine node three. And so if we want to take a look at it, we can just run this command right here. With our password and we'll notice that we have one instance in it. So now we need to create the certificates, uh, the certificate sign request that the hub would then uh, sign. Now we need to run this command with the, our alias the, the alias for the uh, the password, change it, change it, and the key store. And so right here we have shrine node three, creating the shrine node CSR with our password of change it using our shrine dot key store. And if we look in the folder, we'll notice that we have a shrine node CSR. And we create our initial certificate. We need to have that signed by the hub and also import the hub certificate on our local shrine key. So we'll begin by installing the local shrine key, the local hub. This is the shrine CA and this is our shrine key. So we are going to import the, the shrine CA key into our hub. It'll ask us to trust it, yes, and it's been added. The next thing is we generated the certificate for the shrine certificate and the hub needs to sign it. So if you're on the hub, so I copied over the node three shrine certificate and I'm going to use easy SR 
easy RSA to load it and the request was successfully imported. We've done that command. The next command that we need to do is to sign it. And so we're going to sign it. And confirm yes. And that has been completed. So the only other step on the hub side is to register the new shrine node into the shrine database. So we accomplish this by using this following curl command and registering the node to get a 202. At this point, we should restart the shrine hub. and then restart it. Sign certificate on the server. We need to then import that sign certificate back into our node three. So here is our sign certificate. And we are going to make a shrine node 3 signed this and then we can import this into our certificate into our shrine key and we can import it into our shrine key using the following command been successfully imported. So now we need to restart Tomcat. And start it up again. <laughs> 